the body is divided into a variety of internal spaces called body cavities that provide important functions to the internal organs, including support, separation, and protection. In this video, we'll focus on the major body cavities, such as the cranial cavity, the vertebral canal, the thoracic cavity, and the abdominopelvic cavity. The cranial cavity is formed by the cranial bones of the skull and contains the brain. Continuous with the cranial cavity is the vertebral or spinal canal. It is formed by the bones of the vertebral column, the vertebrae, making up the backbone, and contains the spinal cord and the beginnings of the spinal nerves. The brain and spinal cord are surrounded and protected by three membranes called the meninges and a shock-absorbing fluid called the cerebrospinal fluid. The trunk contains two major body cavities, the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity. This cavity is divided into the superior abdominal cavity and the inferior pelvic cavity. Both of these cavities hold a variety of organs that are collectively called the viscera. The thoracic, or chest cavity, is formed by the ribs, sternum, chest muscles, and the thoracic vertebrae of the vertebral column. The thoracic cavity contains the pericardial and pleural cavities and the mediastinum. The pericardial cavity is the fluid-filled space that surrounds the heart. Each of the two pleural cavities is a fluid-filled space, each surrounding one lung. You can remember the name pleural because there are two of these cavities. The mediastinum is an anatomical region located in the central or median portion of the thoracic cavity between the lungs. It extends from the sternum to the vertebral column and from the first rib to the diaphragm. The mediastinum contains the heart, thymus, esophagus, trachea, and several of the heart's large blood vessels. An important anatomical landmark is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a large dome-shaped skeletal muscle used in respiration that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominopelvic cavity. The abdominopelvic cavity extends from the diaphragm down to the groin and consists of the superior abdominal cavity and the inferior pelvic cavity. The abdominal cavity contains the digestive organs, including the stomach, spleen, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, and most of the large intestine. The pelvic cavity contains the urinary bladder, some of the large intestine, including the rectum, and the internal reproductive organs. Membranes are thin, flexible tissues that cover, line, separate, and protect anatomical structures. Serous membranes line the walls of the thoracic and abdominopelvic cavities as well as cover the viscera located within. Serous membranes are double-layered, fluid-filled, and slippery membranes that consist of two layers of thin epithelial tissue, the parietal layer and the visceral layer. The parietal layer is the outermost layer of a serous membrane that lines the walls of the cavities. The visceral layer is the innermost layer of a serous membrane that covers and attaches to the viscera found inside the cavities. There is a small quantity of serous fluid located in a space between the two layers that functions as a lubricant to minimize friction and allows the viscera to easily slide past each other during movement. A great way to visualize the organization of a serous membrane is to think of a fist 
pushed into a partially inflated balloon. Imagine the fist as an organ, like the heart, and the balloon as the serous membrane surrounding it. The inner layer of the balloon touching the fist is the visceral layer, and the outer layer of the balloon is the parietal layer. The inner space of the balloon is the serous cavity that holds the serous fluid. The pericardial cavity contains a serous membrane called the pericardium. The parietal pericardium lines the chest wall. The visceral pericardium covers the surface of the heart. The parietal cavity is the fluid-filled space in between the two layers that acts as a lubricant. Each of the two pleural cavities contains a serous membrane called the pleura. The parietal pleura lines the chest wall and covers the superior surface of the diaphragm. The visceral pleura attaches to the surface of the lungs. The pleural cavity is located between these two layers and contains a small amount of lubricating fluid. The serous membrane of the abdominopelvic cavity is the peritoneum. The parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal wall and covers the inferior surface of the diaphragm. The visceral peritoneum covers the abdominal viscera. The peritoneal cavity is located between these two layers and, like the other cavities, also contains a small amount of lubricating fluid. This fluid prevents irritation and physical wear and tear caused by the movement of the internal organs against each other.